sponsored by Brilliant. Late last year, after a pack of petulant pundit hot takes about how the iPhone 11 would be doomed, so very doomed, because it didn't have 5G, I did my best to calmly, rationally explain why those first generation modems were too hot and power hungry, the network so few and far between, and the capacity nowhere nearly at mainstream iPhone scale yet. And the iPhone 11 somehow managed to not only survive without a lick of 5G, but thrive, as in best selling. So yeah, told you so, whatever. But now, this year, the next generation of modems are slightly better. The networks are slightly bigger. And even though 5G is still a mess, rumor has it Apple will be going all in come the fall. But what does that really mean? I'm Rene Ritchie, and this is Vector. It should come as absolutely no surprise to anyone, much less those that cover the company, that Apple didn't race out the gate to internet comment first the iPhone with 5G. I mean, as quickly as they've been to adopt new Wi-Fi technologies, including Wi-Fi 6, that's how conservative they've traditionally been with cellular radios. It took until the second generation iPhone 3G for the iPhone to go 3G, and until the iPhone 5 for it to go LTE. And you know what? By doing that, Apple spared its customers hour-long battery life like the HTC Thunderbolt and an even worse experience on carriers like AT&T that could barely provide service on the networks they'd more fully built out. Now, I honestly still don't think we've reached those inflection points for 5G either yet, but Apple just might because all the rumors are pointing to go time being the iPhone 12 this fall. Okay, so the original iPhone used Infineon modems, but those were GSM only. And when Apple expanded from AT&T and onto Verizon in the US, they had to go with Qualcomm to support CDMA. GSM, or the Global System for Mobile Communications, is what most of the world was using. CDMA, or Code Division Multiple Access, is what Verizon and Sprint used in the US back then. And Qualcomm had it wrapped up so tightly that even though these kinds of technologies were supposed to be licensed under FRAN terms, freely, reasonably, and non-discriminatory, it was effectively impossible to do so. So Apple ended up going with Qualcomm and making world phones that you could use pretty much anywhere. But Apple had to pay an exorbitant Qualcomm tax to do it, which meant that tax got passed on to us. In other words, Everyone in the world had to pay for CDMA compatibility even when they weren't buying a phone on Verizon or Sprint. And Apple, like Sauron, does not share power. I mean profits. So began looking for alternatives, at least for phones not being sold on Verizon or Sprint. That led Apple back to Infineon, which by then had been bought by Intel. Apple replaced just the Qualcomm modems on just the GSM iPhones, which were the vast majority of iPhones. Now, the Intel modems didn't work as well as the Qualcomm modems, but they worked well enough for Apple's cost to benefit analysis. In other words, to get on Apple's Olympic modem team, all you had to do was sprint 100 meters in under 10 seconds. It didn't matter if Intel could do it in 9.9 .9 seconds and Qualcomm in 8.2, both were under 10 seconds. It also didn't matter that Qualcomm could do it on pavement, grass, or mud, and Intel couldn't. For Apple, it meant not having to deal with Qualcomm and what Apple considered to be their gouging, abusive, anti-competitive practices, except for all the lawsuits that almost immediately began flying back and forth. But that was LTE. Now, 5G was coming, and Qualcomm had gotten just as much, if not more, of a stranglehold on that technology, and had just as much, if not more, of a lead in the modem technology they needed to use it. Apple and Intel tried to roll their own in a way that Qualcomm believed only further violated their patents and licenses and amped up the lawsuits. But in the end, Intel just couldn't deliver a 5G solution in anything approaching a timely enough fashion. So, Apple and Qualcomm decided to bury the very large lawsuit hatchet they'd been hacking away on each other with to once again work on modems for the iPhone, this time for 5G. Now, Apple did end up buying Intel's 5G modem business back in July, and there was some speculation that, Qualcomm license now firmly in hand, they might just keep plugging away at a custom modem. But realistically, that's probably still years away, perhaps roughly the same exact number of years away as the new Qualcomm deal. So. Qualcomm modem. To make things even more complicated, 
5G isn't just 5G. We've been spoiled by LTE because for all intents and purposes, nobody even has to think about which LTE technology works on which LTE network. We all just buy phones, pop in SIM cards, and go about our lives. The pain of Edge and HSPA and EVDO, just foggy, desperate to be forgotten memories. But now, 5G, hi. There are actually a few different kinds of 5G, but the two most important for this discussion are low band and high band. Low band, also known as sub six, because it operates below 600 megahertz, isn't much faster than LTE, maybe 20% at best. But as my friend and colleague Daniel Bader likes to remind us, most people still don't have access to good LTE coverage, and sub six, with its range and ability to penetrate buildings and walls, will mostly just deliver on the promise of LTE for all those people. So while the Technorati may belittle it, it will likely end up being the most meaningful and impactful part of this generation of 5G. High band, also known as millimeter wave because of how short the wavelengths are at those frequencies, is much, much, much faster than LTE, but has almost no range and no ability to penetrate buildings or walls. Like if you stand beneath a tower, you're fine. If you walk or turn or, you know, it starts to rain, you can drop back to LTE and fast. So while this may be really real 5G, may also be close to useless for consumers and end up being relegated to niches like WiMAX was. It's also worth going over because it's been causing some confusion that connecting to a cellular network, including a 5G cellular network, involves more than just a modem proper. There's the modem, the RF front end, the antennas. There have been rumors about Apple working on its own custom RF front end as well, for example, or buying Broadcom's RF front end business. Recently, there was a rumor that Apple would be making its own 5G antennas, and that quickly got conflated and panicked into Apple ditching Qualcomm and making its own modems again. And no, Please stop, they're two very different things. Apple's been making their own antennas for years after all. Anyone remember holding their iPhone 4 wrong? Apple and Qualcomm are gonna figure out what they can do in the time they have to do it, and then we'll all get to judge just how well they did it come the fall. So here's my guess as to what we'll see with the iPhone 12. Apple will have LTE versions of the iPhone 12 available for the vast majority of markets where 5G simply makes no sense whatsoever, at least not yet. Whether those are cheaper or not, or offset some of the higher international prices, we'll have to wait and see. Next, the iPhone 12, which replaces the current iPhone 11. Rumor has it we'll be getting two of those this year, a smaller and a bigger model, just like the pros had last year. And these, both smaller and bigger, will support low band sub six, and only low band sub six. Lastly, the two new iPhone 12 pros, which replace the current iPhone 11 pros, regular and max, these will support both sub six and high band millimeter wave. In other words, all the 5G, all of it. But hopefully with both Apple and Qualcomm able to manage power efficiency and radio use well enough that it doesn't hit our newfound iPhone battery life bliss like Optimus Prime in full on Mac truck mode. And to learn exactly how that kind of technology works, check out Brilliant's new algorithm fundamentals course. You start with simple drag and drop exercises to get you thinking like a computer scientist about conditionals, loops, arrays, and how to put them together into common algorithms for searching and sorting. Brilliant is a problem solving based website and app with a hands-on approach and over 60 interactive courses in math, science, and computer science. It puzzles you, surprises you, and expands your understanding of the modern world. And all of Brilliant's courses have storytelling, code writing, interactive challenges, and problems to solve. The best thing you can do in 2020 is invest in your STEM skills. So go to brilliant.org slash vector and finish your day a little smarter every day. Thanks Brilliant and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. That's my current prediction for Apple's 2020 lineup, but now I wanna hear yours. So hit like if you do, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that bell gizmo so YouTube will actually let you know when future shows go live. Then hit up the comments and let me know. What do you want to see from Apple, the iPhone, and 5G come this fall? Thanks for watching. See you next video.